hello guys welcome back to the second video on, in our introduction to autogen crash course so in this video we'll be looking at uh, adding tools to our agents so in the last video we look at how to create agent we had two different agents working together having the user proxy acting as a human in the group in the conversation well, between the agentic ais now we're going to go ahead and do, add different tools to these ai agents so tools can enable ai agents to do different things like calling apis your own personal apis uh, performing internet search reading files uh, doing different kind of things right so in this case you're going to go ahead and learn how to add tool, tools and just this is just a part six of this video so if you haven't watched the last videos you can go ahead and check the vid last videos out okay so now let's go ahead and learn how to add uh, tools to this agent so in the last video we, we learned we reach uh, this part of creating two agents and having them have a conversation with each other right so basically you're going to have the same code the only difference is that you're going to go ahead and be adding a function this so I can, I can even go ahead and simply copy uh, let me just copy uh, this part of the code. I don't, I don't want to copy everything. I'm just going to copy this part of the code. Uh, create a new file, right? I'm going to call this file uh, part underscore 02.py. And instead of this file, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the content that I just copied. Okay. So one thing before we move on is that I changed my GPT, uh, the model that the GPT model that I'm using inside of my config file. I'm now using the GPT-4 preview model. So if I go right here, I can see it. I can show it right here. I'm using the GPT-4 Turbo preview model, which is better for function calling because calling tools is just basically actually function calling, right? So the GPT-4 uh, Turbo preview is good for function calling from my own uh, personal research. So we'll be using that for function calling in the, in this video, okay? So now uh, what we simply did is that we have our configuration loaded up here. We have our LM configuration loaded. We have the assistant loaded. Now assistant, I want to also pass in an assistant a system uh, message to this. So I'm just going to say system message and it's going to be equals to the following. So I'm going to say for currency conversion, for currency conversion tasks, uh, tasks, we're going to say it only use the functions you have been, uh, the functions you have been provided, right? We only want to use the function that's been provided with, right? Reply with terminate once uh, once this function once your task let's say your your task uh, task is done okay that's basically it so that's basically the system prompt you can basically add any system prompt just informing it that hey in case you have any function call just go ahead and use the function call that we provided you right so uh, that's it and make sure that we add in a comma right here to avoid the error that you're getting right here good so uh, also go ahead and, and now also add poetry also go ahead and install dr go i already have that already installed so if i go back and you can say poetry uh, add and then say duck duck go search duck 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 go and then underscore uh, hyphen search and then run that so that's going to go ahead and install duck duck go search which i already have installed so you don't have to worry about it but in your case you go ahead and simply install duck duck go i had this installed so you can go ahead and actually save on time so duck duck go and make sure that you have duck duck, duck go search installed so once we have this done now we, are, we have the two agents right we have the assistant agent and we also have the user proxy agent so now we're going to go ahead now define a set of tools which are basically functions and that these tools these agents can call and use okay so we're going to have a function calling a called function architecture so you have what we're going to have one function that's going to call another function so the called function is going to be the called function right the call function is the call function and then you're going to have another function that's going to be calling the called function so we're going to have a calling function called function architecture okay so uh, to do that let's get started so i'm going to have a function we'll call this function exchange uh, exchange underscore rate and you're going to take in a query a user query is going to be of type a string as str and at the end of the day you're going to also return a string right so we're going to have a try uh, a try and accept block right here so i'm going to pass and you're going to have an exception accept exception uh, accept uh, exception so you can accept exception as uh, e and then simply pass for now good so now we need to go ahead and use duck, duck go to perform an internet search that's going to get a uh, currency conversion rate because this tool is enables the bot to be able to search uh, on the internet to get currency conversion rate and be able to convert one currency to another currency so basically i can ask it question on any currency conversion and it can do that task for me so now i'm going to go i'm going to go ahead and import duck, duck goes here so i say from duck duck go search import uh dd uh sorry ddgs just like that Okay, so once we have that, I'm going to use that, right? I'm going to use a context studio. So I'm going to say with uh, duck, duck, go search, uh, call this as, uh, we're going to say as uh, duck, duck, go search. In our lower cases, we're going to say result equals to, uh, we're going to use a list, uh, a list comprehension. We're going to say R for R in duck, duck, go search 
text and you're going to go ahead and pass in the query the user query sorry the user query right here and you're also going to pass in the maximum uh, max underscore results and the maximum results are going to say the maximum results is going to be one and then at the end of the day you're going to write uh, a ternary statement right here which is just a single line if and else statement in python you're going to go ahead and simply say return uh, result if result else you're going to return no result from basically a 404 right so that's basically it and then for the exception handle i'm going to simply raise a value exception so raise i'm going to say raise a value error you can basically raise anything that you want okay so you can just go and say, say error then you can actually so you can use an f string right here to print out the whatever exception or card right so that's basically how you can handle that now this is going to be the called function right so now we're going to have another function which is going to be the calling function that's going to be called calling the called function right that's the architecture that you're having so we're going to have another function right i'm going to call it currency uh currency underscore calculator and this function is going to take in a query again so query and query is going to be of type string and it's going to go ahead and return to us uh basically a string at the end of the day so let's just say a string just like that okay so what this function does it takes in a query and you need to go ahead and provide in uh annot you have to annotate it, annotate the query the reason why we are annotating this query is because we're not having a default value for this parameter so the reason why we are annotating this uh parameter okay is because we don't have a default value for it so if you don't have a default default value inside of the parameters of the calling function then it's a must like a complete mass that you have to annotate it so let me just go ahead and import a couple of things from here so i'm going to say from uh type from typing i'm going to say from typing i'm going to import the annotated right the annotated right here so we're going to go ahead and annotate this parameter so i'm going to say annotated just like this and you're going to go ahead and pass you're going to say number of type string i'm going to say query uh okay the number of string so i'm going to say query query string uh which uh which the the currency uh let's say which uh, currency conversion is required so we basically it's going to be a string in which currency conversion okay let me get that right so currency conversion is required so that's basically it so once we have this function uh we can go ahead and define what this function does okay so what this function is going to do basically is just basically query the internet and get the information about currency exchange information using the calling function or this function right here the called function so i'm going to go and say and say i'm going to have a value right and say quoted quote underscore amount you can basically say name anything you want you're going to say exchange uh exchange rate and you're going to go ahead and pass in the query that we get from uh from this function right here but the, the, sorry the query that you get here you're going to pass it in here okay that's going to return to us uh the the quoted amount which is this right here the quote amount that's basically what you want so now that you have a uh, a call a called function and a calling function now you can go ahead and actually register this function at, as tools but basically uh to register this function as tools, there are different ways you can do it you can actually use registers you can also use different techniques but the one of the easiest thing i found is this method that we can use to register it let me just show you how to use this method i'm going to say autogen dot uh dot agent chat basically agent chat and i'm going to say dot register function and you're going to go ahead and pass in which function that you want to register you're going to register the, the currency uh, calculator you're going to go to pass in the caller a caller right here and the caller is going to be the the assistant the agent that you're having the assistant assistant agent you're going to have the the call the the, the, the executor so I'll explain to you what the difference between the executor and the caller. Okay, so the, the executor is going to be the user proxy. Then you're going to have a description of this function. So it's the currency conversion. Currency conversion. Okay, so let me just uh, let's say used for currency conversion. That's basically it. So now, now that we have this function, uh, this uh, method done, let me explain to you one of the advantages of using this method. You see, basically, if you ever work with Langchain back in the days or OpenAI, function calling can be, a, you have to write a whole Python dictionary having different types and different things explaining what to do, which is really, really tedious. Let me just show you what you used to do back in the time. So I'm going to say print, and I'm going to go ahead and print the the autogen. So I'm going to say assistant, assistant agent dot uh, LLM config. Okay, you're getting the LLM configuration, you're getting the 
the tools out of it. That's basically it. So getting the tools out of that LLM configuration. So if I print this out, you can see the function code that we used to do back in this one. So say poetry, uh, poetry, uh, run Python three, and then I'm going to go ahead and write run the part uh, two function right here. So this is going to return to us the function, the dictionary, or the Python, yeah, the Python dictionary, or the JSON format of how would we uh, would specify functions back in the time. But with this method that we just use right here, we don't actually have to go ahead and write all this. It, all this is a lot of code that you have to write back in time. But now with this method right here and uh, using the decorators that AutoGen provides, all that is done for you by the mouse, by the computer. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really, really a big fan of this uh, way of doing things instead of the old way. So if, if you think this actually is, let me just actually pr prettify this and then show you something. So I'm going to say import JSON. So once I have JSON import, then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go ahead and create pretty, pretty underscore JSON. It's going to be equals to, I'm going to say JSON dot dump S and I'm going to go ahead and say assistant agent, assistant agent dot uh, LLM config. Let's just get this out of the LLM config and I'm going to get the list of tools and I'm going to go ahead and specify an indent, an indent to be two, just like that. Okay, so once we have this done, I'm going to go ahead and print uh, sorry, print the pretty printed, pretty JSON. Okay, so once I have this, then I'm going to go back in the terminal, clear this, and then run this once again. So now you can see this kind of return to us a pretty, prettified version of this JSON, which is this right here. So back in the days, we have to create a list and then specify the tools like this, right? This was really, really tedious to do, right? And I, I just hated it the way it, we used to do this. So now with this, uh, Met with this uh, method, we can simply do it much, much, much easier, right? So instead of writing all this code, we just have to now do this, right? Good. So now that you have this, let me comment this out and let me explain to you a couple of things. So now in this register function, you pass in the function that you want to register. You can notice you're also passing in these two things, caller and executor and description. So these three, very, these three things are very, very important. Let me start with the caller. Let me explain to you. So whenever I, uh, let's say I ask the, 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 the bots to change for me $10 into euros, right? So now the, this question is going to get presented to the assistant, right? So the assistant say, okay, I need to change euros, dollars to euros. So what do I need to do to do this? Now I need a currency conversion, converter. And what tells it that this tool is used for currency conversion? The description, right? So once the agent spots, okay, I need to use this tool to call, to perform currency conversion. It doesn't go ahead and call this function or execute this function itself or ex execute those tools themselves itself. What the assistant does is still is instead is that it uh, passes suggests the tool to the executor, which is a user proxy, and the user proxy executes the tool or the function call on its behalf. So this assistant just suggests it, and then the executor executes it. Right? That's exactly what it says. Execute it. So that's basically the architecture that it uh, we have. So basically, once you have this done, you can begin to initiate a chat. So we're going to say user underscore proxy dot initiate, uh, initiate a chat, just like this. And you can go ahead and pass in the assistant right here, assistant, and you also go ahead and pass in the message. So the message is going to be a couple of messages. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, how much is uh, 123.45 uh, USD, which is US dollars in the uh, euros. Okay, so once we have that uh, basically prompt or question to the LLM there, so what to simply do, we ask the, we ask the chatbot to convert for us 123.45 USD into euros. So what simply goes ahead, the, this question will get presented to the assistant and the assistant says, hey, I need to convert USD into euros. That's currency conversion, right? Which tool can I use for that? And then simply selects our tools and then suggests this tool to the user proxy, which is actually the executor, which is going to execute this function calls and then get for us the currency conversion to now call this function, which is in turn going to go ahead and call this function. So we have the calling function, call function architecture, and this is going to use the DuckDuckGo tool to search online to get for us the, uh, the exchange rates. And then finally, there is uh, use, use that exchange rate information, calculate euros, the dollars into euros, and then return to us the answer. So this, this is basically how it works. So now let me just go back into the terminal, clear this and simply rerun the code again. So again, uh, to, for, to use function calling, I suggest that you use the GPT, uh, as I said here, use the GPT uh, 3 point, uh, 4 point, GPT 4 Turbo Preview model. Okay, it's just better for function calling from my experience. So uh, I suggest that you use that. So you can see right here, we are having a lot of issues. 
okay so you can see now all that train fine and we, uh, it seems to be getting an issue it can't really convert the the currency it, it can't really call it's calling this function but it says uh got an expected keyword max results okay so now let's go ahead and fix you can see in the function calling it's trying to call the function but you have an error in the inside of this function so let's go ahead and fix that error uh which is right here so it's max uh max results okay let me get the spelling of results right there so that's the spelling of result and uh, i didn't make any typos hopefully any more typos so results and that's i just want one so play the terminal and let's run this again so hopefully uh there's no more error inside of uh the called function and everything is gonna work as we expect it to so you can see it's calling the function and it's trying to convert some usd into some shillings and you can see uh 120 usd is approximately 100 114.34 euros okay so i don't know the current conversion rate so you can actually check that out on the internet and see if that's actually correct but basically that's basically how it works and you can see it called it tool successfully and it was able to convert 124 123.45 euro uh, dollars which is what we specify right here into uh, euros okay so you can see we got back that result and you can read the chart and see how everything went about so you can see these charts are uh, both cooperating and working together to call to, to to solve the task again i would suggest that you use a much powerful model such as the three uh gpt4 turbo preview model don't go ahead and use something like the gpt uh, 3.5 turbo model it's just not good for function calling from my experience so i suggest you go for these high-end models okay they are much much better okay so i just use it because it's, uh, it has been used much more than this is still new so i don't know you can test out test out and let me know if it works for you fine you can let me know in the chats so guys uh that's all uh, how we can you work with function calling in autogen so guys thank you guys for watching and i hope you found this uh, video helpful if you did uh, please uh, one of the ways you can support the channel is by liking the video sharing this video with any of your friends who you think might find it helpful and if you want to support the channel further you can buy me coffee the links will be in the description all the money and revenue generated from there goes into video production to make for you high and higher quality content so guys thank you guys for watching so much and see you in the next one keep safe